Magazine and singletrackworld.com and welcome to Fresh Goods Friday Live. Um, here on the couch in Ben's workshop, uh, mind you, it could not be Friday where you're tuning in from. Um, perhaps if you're on a different part of the earth, this might be mm, Fresh Thursday Goods Live. Um, if you are watching from, uh, well, wherever you're watching in the world from, please let me know. I'd love to, uh, I'd love you to comment and tell me where in the world you're watching from. Uh, we've got plenty of followers all around the world and it's always cool to find out where people are tuning in from and, uh, and where the good writing is as well. So give me the hot tip on that. Always, always good to have that information. Um, I have got some fresh goods for you here today and I thought I'd bring you some information about the goods that we have here. So for anyone tuning in, hello there. We've got a few, uh, few people tuning in live. Welcome to uh, Fresh Goods Friday Live. And uh, tell me your name, where, you, where in the world you're watching from. And if you've got any questions for me about the goods we've got here or any other questions about mountain bikes, anything um, new that's hit the market in the last couple of weeks, um, drop them in the comment section right here. You can do that. Um, I can see it on the screen in front of me, so I can hopefully answer your questions. So welcome again. Um, I'm in my good friend Ben's workshop, so uh, we've got a lovely space here. I, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're a fan of the Klein Mantra behind me here, give us a thumbs up. It's a very pretty looking bike, I think. Um, yeah, really cool space here. So I'm going to be doing plenty of videos over summer um, in this workshop. So if there's anything you would like to see specifically, um, perhaps any bike comparison, tests, reviews, workshop related features, how to's, that kind of thing. Um, let me know. We're on the lookout for plenty of ideas for videos. I've got some myself, um, but if you'd like to see anything in particular, let me know. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So I'm going to rattle through a few of the products that I've got here. So I've been back in Australia for about a month now. I moved over from the UK um, after living there for about two and a half years. So I've set up in Australia as the tech editor for Single Track, and um, and I've started getting a few things through. We've had a few test bikes turn up, and uh, and a few bits of uh, new PNA as well. Um, so I've got them here, and we're going to talk to you about them. The first I want to talk to you about is this blue helmet here, which is from Giant. Now Giant, of course, most of you will probably be familiar with uh, their bikes. They've uh, got a huge range dare I say, giant range of, uh, of bicycles, mountain bikes, road bikes, kids bikes, commuters, hybrids, all that sort of stuff. They also do a load of PNA, and uh, and I think some of this stuff tends to fly under the radar. Um, other bike brands like uh, Specialized and Trek, um, Scott as well, they do the same thing. They produce their own shoes, their own helmets, um, often tires, um, wheels, handlebars, all that sort of stuff. Um, so Giant does the same thing, and you'll be able to find these helmets in Giant dealers, um, as far as I'm aware, Giant dealers only. Um, but it's worth having a look at some of this gear, because there's some really great stuff that these brands are putting out, um, and often at a pretty aggressive price point, um, relative to perhaps some of the other name brands out there that you might be familiar with. Um, this is Giant's top-of-the-range helmet. Now, it's called the Rail SX MIPS. Um, now, the rail helmet has been in the Giant lineup for a couple of years. This is the new version, this one here. Um, it looks very similar. It's an enduro style or, or trail or enduro style helmet. So it's got plenty of uh, extended coverage. It's designed to have a nice thick shell. Um, for that type of riding, you're probably going to be perhaps riding at a slightly higher risk level than you might be when you're cross-country riding. Um, or just general kind of um, mountain biking. Um, so it's got a nice thick EPS shell, loads of coverage at the back. Um, it's got extended coverage around the temples here, so that's kind of that important bit on the side which tends to uh, be the delicate area that might hit the ground if you're, if you're flying, <laughs> flying over the handlebars. Um, compared to the previous rail helmet, this has more coverage. Um, looking at my cheat sheet here, um, it's three to five mil lower on the sides and on the back of the helmet it's eight to ten millimeters lower. So the whole helmet wraps around your head with, for more deep coverage, um, basically to give you more protection. So although it looks similar to the previous rail, um, it is a brand new helmet. Um, also inside we have integrated MIPS liner. So I'm going to show you, I don't know if you guys can see that, you can probably see the little yellow logos there. Um, give me a thumbs up if you can see that. 
Um, so that's an integrated MIPS liner. The idea there is that it's more low profile than the previous MIPS liner that Giant was using in the rail helmet. Um, so the fit is more consistent. So uh, you don't end up with, um, say, buying a helmet that you think is going to be the right size, but then it feels a little smaller because a MIPS liner is kind of taking up that space inside. Um, that doesn't happen with this helmet. It's very, very low profile, but it's still that MIPS liner is designed to allow the whole helmet to kind of uh, rotate on your head in the event of a crash. So if you do hit something, the helmet is going to rotate on your head so that your brain inside your skull um, experiences less rotation itself because that's what actually happens in an oblique impact. Your brain kind of floats inside the skull. Oh, we've got someone tuning in there. Sticky Nuts. Hi there, folks. Hello, Sticky Nuts. Great handle, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you are just tuning in, this is Fresh Goods Friday Live with Will. Um, that's me. I just said my name in the third person, which is really weird. Um, or Fresh Thursday Goods Live, depending on where in the world you're tuning in from. If you are tuning in, we've got loads of people watching at the moment. Um, let me know whereabouts in the world you're watching from. I'd love to know. Uh, we're just talking about this giant MIPS helmet here. I'm going to chuck it on my noggin just to show you how it looks. It's a pretty solid helmet. Um, this has an adjustable visor. Todd. Oh, from Tomberton. Oh, well, it is Fresh Goods Thursday. Fresh Goods Thursday live for you. So welcome from Tomberton. Um, I think it's just as wet here at the moment as it is in Tomberton. It has been raining nonstop for 24 hours. We've got a bit of a summer storm come through. It's feeling very tropical here in Bendigo in Australia. In Australia. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, we were just talking about this uh, giant mitts helmet. I've got the medium size. There are three sizes, small, medium and large. And you don't have to get the blue, the enduro blue. There's also red and black for those who, uh, who would like a different color. They're all a nice matte finish like this one. But as you can tell, let me just get down near the camera here. Loads of coverage around the temples here, loads of coverage around the rear of the helmet. Um, so it is designed as a, as a trail slash enduro type helmet. Also, what you'll see up here is a nice flat section. Um, now, Giant don't have any integrated um, helmet mounts for lights or cameras, but they have designed this flat area here for a stick-on GoPro mount, and it's, uh, it's shaped perfectly for, for that particular mount. So if you do like recording video while you're riding, that's where it goes. Um, so it is designed to do uh, to fit that video mount on there. I'm going to take this off now. The other feature on here, which is pretty neat, this is a little integrated goggle clip. So there we go. We've got a button here and an elastic band. And here's some I prepared earlier. We have some goggles here that I'm going to throw on this helmet. So this goggles clip goes around the back. And if I can get it in place, it holds the strap down on the back of the helmet. So the idea is that strap isn't going to be going walkabouts whilst you're riding. And that's kind of what it looks like thereabouts with the goggles um, kind of in, in stowed form. So for your transition stages, see I've got the lingo down pat. Let me just uh, clip this in, you know, safety first and all that. So there you go. So the visor kind of flips up. And you've got the goggles up the top there. And if I put these on, there we go. That's a great look, isn't it? I should do the rest of the video like this. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, it is goggle compatible and enduro friendly. Um, so that's the, the giant rail SX helmet there. Let me just whip those off and undo this clip. And there you go, you can clip that back up so you don't have to use that, obviously, if you're not using goggles. Um, so for those who are playing at home, price on this one, uh, in Australia, this is $184.95. In the UK, it's £119. So uh, quite good value for a what is a top of the range MIPS equipped enduro slash trail helmet. So there you go, that's the, uh, the Giant Rail SX. Uh, I'm going to talk about this. This is a pump. Pumps are normally really boring, um, but it's worth talking about this. This is a floor pump from Syncross. The Syncross is owned by Scott. Um, so Syncross is the component brand for Scott. See, there we go. Um, though, according to your camera there, it might say um, something completely different. It might, it might say Sorkness. 
Um, so apologies if that's back to front. Um, this is a floor pump. It's a really sturdy metal floor pump, which is great. But the big feature on this one is it's got uh, two chambers and two valves. And the idea is to have two pumps in one. So you've got a high pressure road pump and a low pressure, high volume mountain bike in one. And the way it does that is really clever. I think this is, it's a bit geeky and a bit nerdy, but I like it. Um, so up here we've got the analog gauge and at the moment we're on the mountain bike setting. So this will go from zero to 40 PSI, which kind of covers most mountain bike tire pressures, um, I would think. And um, at the moment we have two chambers inside this pump, which are engaged. So for every pump, so when we've got this guy here, every pump you're using both chambers. So there's a load of air volume that's going out the hose here into the valve, into your mountain bike tire. And uh, the reason for that is you want a load of volume going to the tire. That will help with, uh, with seating tubeless tires in theory. Um, and it also means that you'll get to your desired pressure with less pumps. That's, that's kind of the idea. Um, now, if you also own a road bike or a commuter bike or a cy cyclocross bike, you might need to go higher than 40 PSI. To do so, all you do is you, you see that? You flip that analog gauge, it flips 180 degrees. So we've got mountain bike, zero to 40 PSI, and we have road bike, zero to 160 PSI. Now what's going on inside the pump is there is a valve here and whenever you switch this, it engages or disengages that valve. So in the road bike position, we, we shut off one of these air chambers so we only have a single air chamber. And all of a sudden, you have a high pressure, low volume pump, which is perfect for your commuter bike, your cyclocross cross bike, your gravel bike, your road bike anything that has higher tire pressures than about 40 PSI. And you can probably see there on the gauge, there you go, your zero to, uh, zero to hero, 160 PSI there. So um, yeah, potentially a great addition for anyone who has multiple bikes at home um, or bike shops or so on. Um, here we've got the nice green anodized uh, metal lever at the top here. Um, and you've got two uh, dual valve head as well. So you can flip that around for Presta or Schrader. So very versatile pump. Um, I only have British pricing on this one. So um, that is 95 quid, 94.99. So it's a pretty high end floor pump. Um, I'll be using this uh, over the next few weeks. I'm also gonna lend it to a, f a few mates of mine who work in a bike shop who would use a floor pump every day, many, many times a day. I want them to give it a thrashing and find out whether this is worth the coin, um, whether it does in fact work. Um, so far, it indicates that it does. <laughs> it puts air into the tires, which is fantastic. Um, but stay tuned for the review on that one there. Let me know if you've got any questions. I see we've got more people tuning in live. Welcome to Fresh Goods Friday Live. Welcome to the couch of fresh goods. Um, and as I said before, it might be Fresh Goods Thursday, depending on where in the world you're watching from. So welcome. Um, please let me know, uh, tell us your name, where you're watching from. I'd love to know. And, uh, and as always, if you've got any questions for me about what we've got here, um, or perhaps you've got questions about that beautiful Klein mantra behind me. If you like that, give me a thumbs up. This, is, uh, this doesn't belong to me, it uh, belongs to my mate Ben. Um, but it's pretty sharp, I think. Um, I'm also going to talk about this while we're talking about Syncros products. Um, this is uh, a mudguard or, or a fender, depending on where in the world um, you define your mud uh, shielding instruments from. Um, this is designed specifically to bolt on the back of a fox fork. Um, so it comes with two little bolts inside the packet here and it clips on the back side of the brace on, the, on a fox fork. This one in particular is designed for a Fox 34 or a 36. You can also get these for the Fox 34 step cast. And Syncross um, has only been making these in black before. This, as you can tell, is not black, it's orange. That's pretty bright. Um, and it's designed to match the Fox orange lowers um, on a 36 uh, or a 34 step cast. So, hey Will, oh, we've got Matthew here tuning in. Welcome. Thanks for joining in, Matthew. And we've got a thumbs up there. So glad you're watching and tuning in. Let me know if you've got any questions. And uh, I've got the screen here. 
Oh, we've got um, Shed Life Guy. Hi, Will. I'm watching in the UK. Welcome, Shed Life Guy. Thanks for tuning in. Great handle, by the way. I like that a lot. <laughs> uh, welcome to Shed Life here, actually, in Bendigo, Australia. Um, but yeah, so we've got that mug guard there from Syncross. Uh, those are 15 quid. So a really neat solution um, if you're less keen on zip tying, you know, using cable ties to strap um, one of those normal kind of mud guards you put in the uh, the fork lowers. This is a very neat bolt-on solution. It comes on a lot of Scott bikes. I've actually tested a couple of bikes with this fitted and it's very, very clean, very neat. Um, right, should we talk tires? I've got four tires here from Specialized and um, tires are always really fun and geeky to talk about. So. If you've got any questions about tires, oh, totally unrelated question. Will you be reviewing the Bird 029? Thanks for the question, Callum. Um, I don't think I will be personally reviewing one uh, because they're not really that available in Australia unless um, Ben Pinnock wants to send one down, uh, down under. You're more than welcome, Ben. Um, but I'm sure the team in the UK will be looking at that because that looks like a pretty hot hardtail, actually. There's some really nice specs on that bike. Um, it's a pretty burly looking kind of trail bike with good looking geometry. So um, we would be very keen to, uh, to get one of those in for testing. I don't know if the UK team already has, but I'll find out for you. And, uh, and I'll put a recommendation in because I think it's, uh, it's a good looking hardtail. Right, tires. So um, as I mentioned before, I've recently relocated. No worries, Callum, we've got a cheers there. Not a problem at all. Um, any other hardtails you'd like us to see tested? Um, anything else that's new on the market that you guys are interested in? There's a lot of really good hardtails at the moment. I think geometry, um, suspension forks, um, dropper posts, kind of wide rims, wide tires, airdrop bitmap, that's another excellent suggestion. Actually, a bit of a head-to-head -head would be kind of interesting, I would think. Uh, though the bitmap is... 27.5, I don't know if Airdrop's doing a 29 a bit, Matt, but either way, that would be a really interesting kind of comparative test between those two. Uh, Shed Life Guy, thanks for, uh, thanks for the question. Will you be reviewing the MRP Bartlett and Hazard Coil Shop? Uh, the Bartlett, now is that the dual crown fork? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, the Hazard Coil Shop, we are inquiring with MRP actually. So um, we would love to get one of those into test. I think um, coil suspension on bikes other than full-blown downhill race bikes is really interesting. Um, the bikes that I've ridden with uh, coil setups have been quite incredible. And I think more and more riders are becoming kind of open to the idea of a mountain bike being a little bit heavier, um, you know, and not being so concerned about weight. Um, if the suspension performance is better, if the descending performance is better, if it's more comfortable, you get more traction, um, you get better control in rough terrain. So I think, although in the past, mountain bikers have been very focused on weight, and as a result, air suspension has always had an advantage over coil suspension. I think these days we're seeing more and more riders add weight to their bikes, be it with a dropper post, heavier tires, with tubeless tire inserts, uh, with bigger forks, you know, bigger stanchion forks as well. Um, so I have, a, I, I, think, um, I think the coil suspension movement's really interesting and uh, I would be really keen to try out that hazard coil. Um, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong on the Bartlett fork. I can't remember if it's the dual crown or if it's a single crown fork. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, yeah, any, any other suspension items you'd like to see us to test? Uh, because there has been a lot been coming out from a lot of smaller brands not just Fox and Rock Shocks, which is really exciting for the industry, really exciting for mountain bikers worldwide, really. I've got forks from Cane Creek, uh, MRP, the aforementioned uh, MRP. Um, what else have we got kicking around? No, well, Formula's going pretty red hot with uh, suspension stuff at the moment. X-Fusion, of course. Um, loads of brands that are kind of throwing their hat in the ring um, in a market that's been dominated by Fox and Rock Shocks. Oh, we've got another question come through. I've just put the Bartlett on my e-bike and it's the plushest fork I've ever used. Yes, 170 to 190 triple crown. That's really good to hear. Thanks for the, thanks for the feedback. Um, you know what? That's right. I was thinking about that exact fork um, for a long travel 29er I was testing recently, the Scott Ransom. Um, unfortunately, the Ransom frame isn't rated for a dual crown fork and that's kind of a bit of a limitation with these kind of... Uh, I would say not downhill specific dual crown forks like the Bartlett, which is kind of like a, 
I guess in the old school terms, you would have called it a free ride fork, right? Um, but now I would say it's kind of like a enduro plus plus kind of fork. Um, but there are a lot of frames out there that won't handle the dual crown fork. They're not rated for it. Um, but then there are frames that are coming out that are like the YT Capra 29 that is rated for a dual crown fork. So that Bartlett fork, as an example, would be a perfect match for that bike if you wanted that kind of super stiff, super burly front end on your bike. Um, what e-bike are you running? Um, let me know. Hold on, let me just have a look here. Shed Life Guy. Sorry, I just forgot your handle there for a moment. I can't believe I forgot that because it's fantastic. Um, what e-bike are you riding? Um, I'm really interested because if you're running a 170 to 190 mil fork, it must be a, a big unit. I'm guessing Levo Canevo um, or something from uh, High Bike, perhaps. They do some pretty long travel rigs. Um, ooh, Klein URT with color matched RockShox forks. Retro, <laughs> retro Tastic Dream Bike. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty dope, isn't it? A High Bike S Duro 6.0. Yes! My second guess was right. <laughs> um, what do you think of it? Um, I've not had a ride on any of the high bike e-bikes, so, um, but they seem to get a really good reputation, particularly in the long travel stuff. Callum is asking, are you back in Australia full time? I'm sure it's been asked already. Um, I am, Callum, yes. Uh, no, it hasn't been asked already, so uh, you're the first person to, uh, to ask that question. Um, yes, uh, we arrived about a month ago and um, we're living in Bendigo, which is where I grew up in. Uh, it's a couple of hours north of Melbourne, for those of you who don't know. Um, and yes, we are based here full time. So for the foreseeable future, um, until we get itchy feet again, I suppose. But, uh, but yeah, a lot of my family, friends live here. The mountain biking is fantastic. Um, there are some really exciting plans at the moment to expand mountain biking and the trail network in Bendigo. And, uh, and I'm hoping to, um, yeah, I'm hoping to be involved with that in some way or another because it's really exciting. Uh, I think you can probably agree um, with with trails being built in your own home in your backyard. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stuff going on there. And the local Bendigo Mountain Bike Club is doing a lot for trail advocacy. So um, so it's a really cool place to be and, um, and I really enjoy it. The trails here, super fast, super rocky, um, very kind of like burly XC kind of trail riding. So... Um, I'm enjoying being back here and, uh, and testing bikes on the trails. Uh, Matthew, will you get bored of being dry and suntan? <laughs> it's a really good question, Matthew. Um, at the moment, it's actually been pouring with rain for the last 24 hours. We've had um, summer thunderstorms rolling through over the past like week and a half. So um, I'm not bored of sun sunlight yet because um, we haven't had heaps of it. I mean in relative terms, uh, <laughs> compared to Tobberton, we've probably had a, a bit more sunshine here. Um, but look, in summer, it can get pretty hot. Uh, Bendigo will clock over 40 degrees um, on a few days over summer. Um, and because it's inland away from the sea, you, you don't necessarily get that coastal cool change in the afternoon. So sometimes you get really hot evenings and the hottest part of the day can be five, six o'clock in the evening. And, uh, and then overnight you get those really warm summer nights and that, that can get a little bit uncomfortable. But, uh, but overall I enjoy the sunshine and uh, I'm relearning how to ride on dusty trails, which after riding on muddy kind of uh, peaty sort of stuff for the past couple of years, it is, um, it is quite a change. Oh, we've got Sticky Nuts saying super sunny here in Tobberton today. That's good to hear. And I did see a couple of photos of blue sky, so that is proof that it was indeed sunny in Tofferton. Um, so maybe we've swapped weather for 24 hours or something like that because it's been pouring down rain here. But to be honest, we need the rain. Mark Olka, yes, but two degrees max. <laughs> That's the caveat, isn't it? Nice blue skies and sunshine, but in winter, then the temperature plummets, doesn't it, when you get those clear days. So uh, two degrees, oof, that's cold. I haven't felt that for a month now and I don't mind that really. Um, shall I talk about tires? Thanks for, uh, thanks for the questions though and the nice little uh, tangent there. Um, I'll probably talk about these, but if you've got any questions for me about tires, um, I'm on a bit of a testing mission at the moment with sort of trying different tires um, and seeing what else is out there and also on different width rims too, which is kind of, well, I would say a hot topic, but it's, you know, it's been around for a while. Um, this is probably the first time I've ridden or will be riding 
attire that looks like this um, for the last couple of years because really for the conditions in Calderdale around Tobberton, this is not a tire you'd want to run. Um, but here in Bendigo, um, or here in Australia in general, for dry, dusty kind of trails, this kind of tread pattern is ideal. So this is the specialised fast track. Um, the clue is in the name. It's a fast rolling kind of cross-country race type tyre. Um, or is it that cart stuff? I don't know if you guys are seeing that in reverse or not, because um, I'm using the opposite camera on my phone. So apologies uh, if that doesn't make any sense to you whatsoever. But I can confirm it is the fast track. Um, it is designed as a lightweight, fast rolling, dry condition, cross country, lightweight trail tire perhaps. Um, I'm planning to run this on the rear, um, but I will be testing it on the front as well. It's the 2.3 inch size. That's a road tire, says Mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, in, in this day and age, it probably almost looks gravel-esque, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, there are parts of the world, and there are quite a few of them, um, where this kind of tire is ideal for cross-country racing or just general cross-country trail riding. Um, now, although this is a very kind of fast looking um, tread pattern, this is actually 2.3 inch width. So you can get this tire in 2.1 and 2.3. Um, so it is a higher volume kind of tire. And it also has the reinforced grid casing. So that's that little white logo there, um, denoting the heavier sidewall. So this isn't actually a super light tire. It's 720 grams for a 29er. Um, so it's heavier than your kind of traditional cross country race tire but it is designed to have a bit more stability to the casing, a bit more durability, so for hitting sharp rocks, um, these sidewalls are designed to give you a little bit more oomph, a little bit more um, uh, strength um, and resistance to being cut open. So it's an interesting tire. So as I said, although it's kind of a fast rolling, um, dry condition type jobby, um, it, is, it does have some uh, interesting kind of trail inspired features. That would bring me along to the next tyre, which is a ground control. Um, now anyone who's followed Specialised since, well, when they first brought out the original Stump Jumper, you'll be familiar with this name. Um, this is the ground control tyre. Now I'm planning to run this one up front with the fast track out back. This is also a 2.3 inch tyre. Um, but the tread pattern, once I unfurl this uh, black rubber snake, um, let me show you. All right, there we go. There's the tread pattern there. So you can, you can tell instantly um, that it's a lot knoblier. The knobs are a lot taller and higher. Uh, we like more knobs, depending on, uh, <laughs> depending on the conditions at hand. Um, the ground control, according to Specialize, is a more versatile trail tire. Um, so yeah, again, it kind of, it ties a condition specific. So it depends where in the world you're riding. Actually on that note, we've got a load of people tuning in here. Hello. Thanks. Thanks for joining. Um, let me know where you're watching from. Tell me what tires you run on your local trails. What are the perfect tires that you've been running? I'd love to know. I'd love to hear some suggestions. As I said, I'm on a bit of a tire testing mission at the moment. Um, so let me know what you're testing, um, yourself. What, what's worked and what hasn't worked, I'd love to hear your feedback on, uh, on what tyres you're running at the moment. So as I said, this is 2.3 inch. Um, Specialised does make this in wider sizes. They do make the ground control in plus sizes, 2.8 and 3 inch as well. Um, but this is a normal 2.3 inch. Um, it is heavier than the Fast Track. So the Fast Track I think was 720. This is claimed at 810 grams. So it's getting up there. It's kind of in between your 600 gram cross country race tires and your one kilo enduro tire. This is kind of smack bang in the middle. We've got um, Essex Hertz MTB. Looks like competition for the Rock Razor. Let me bring this comment up here. Uh, for the Rock Razor, a Minion SS, that ground control. Yeah, it's, um, it's not quite the full semi slick um, that those two tires that you've mentioned, the Rock Razor and the Minion SS. This is still, um, it's still got a pretty consistent, um, if I can get a close up here, this is obviously not fitted to a, to a wheel, so it's a bit hard to tell. But the knob height is pretty consistent on the shoulder blocks and on the center tread on this particular tire. Whereas the semi-slick tires tend to have much bigger cornering tread and then a much shallower, faster rolling center tread. So, um, so I know exactly what you mean, as, as far as this being, 
you know, if you're perhaps into technical trail riding on kind of loose, rocky, um, even wet kind of terrain, um, then this might be a better rear tire, a faster rolling rear tire if you're looking for a bit of extra speed. For my application, which is going to be fast cross country uh, racing and trail riding on dry, rocky trails, this I think is going to be a pretty good front tire. So I'm going to be running that on the front with a fast track on the back um, on the Santa Cruz Blur test bike. So stay tuned for a bit more feedback on what those are like on the trail. Um, now going to something a bit more aggressive, for those of you out there who are think, looking at those, like Mark Olker thinking that's a road bike tyre, you might be a bit more interested in this. Oh, we've got a comment here from Callum. Magic Mary up front all year and Hans Dump in the dry on the back. However, I've never found a rear for winter that I'm totally happy with for UK riding. Yeah, it can be a, a tricky thing, can't it? Because conditions are always changing as well, even if you ride the same trails. Um, at different times of the year, the, the, the conditions can be different. So it's, I think it's, it, they're like shoes, aren't they, tyres? I mean, ideally you'd change them, well, I wouldn't say every day, that's a bit over the top, but you'd change them for the conditions. So it, it does depend on uh, what's at hand there. So we've got John Wakefield, who's tuning in, who's uh, commented, looking to get the new WTB Vigilante 2.6 and Trail Boss 2.4 winning combo. Yeah, they look really good, those new WTB tyres, new tread patterns, new, uh, they've got new rubber, new casing options and everything, so they're looking good. Matthew Pinfield, Hans Dampf and Magic Mary are sweet on Canic Chase at the moment, but on the e-bike, plenty of mud. Yeah, the Magic Mary, I mean, that's kind of the benchmark, really, as far as um, shit to a blanket traction. That thing is ridiculously good. You know, I always know if I go to a, a press launch where they've got a new bike, and it's got Magic Mary on, on the front or Magic Mary front and rear, I know I'm in good hands because occasionally you turn up to a launch and you're riding unfamiliar trails, unfamiliar conditions on an unfamiliar bike and then you've got some weird tires or you know non-suitable tires and that's gonna be really stressful. Have you tried Michelin Wild Enduros yet? No, I haven't, Callum. That's a really good point. I've actually got a friend who's running Michelin tires at the moment and I commented that the other day and said, Michelin, where have they been all these years? They kind of come out every now and then with, you know, some new tyres, but I, I, they just don't seem to be as popular as your Maxxis, your Schwab, your Continental, your Specialised, your Bontragers. You, you, they just don't seem to be out there as much. But obviously back in the day, everyone had Michelin, or if they didn't, they wanted Michelin tyres. You know, they had that real kind of uh, prestige about them, especially those green ones, which were amazing. Uh, at least they looked amazing, <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> Compared to tyres now, they're uh, not so good. Maxxis Minions DHR2 working well in the mud front and rear for me. Yes, Sticky Nuts, I highly recommend and uh, I, sorry, I highly agree with your comment there. The DHRs are fantastic tyres, totally underrated in my opinion and uh, I'm a big fan of running it on the front as well because a lot of people will run the, D the Minion DHF on the front and the DHR on the rear. Um, because F for front, R for rear, right? That's not actually always the case. The original term for Minion DHF was DH free ride, and the Minion DHR was downhill race. So um, they did evolve into this kind of front and rear specific type um, tread uh, style, I guess. I wouldn't say tread pattern necessarily. Um, but 2.8 front and rear, whoa, that's a whole lot of tyre. <laughs> yeah, not going uphill quickly with that tyre combination, but definitely going downhill quickly. Um, yeah, if you want confidence, those DHR2s, um, the braking traction you get from them is insane. And uh, if you're based in Tobin, oh, you're on an e-bike. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. So uh, yeah, you basically want as much traction as possible. On that note, Sticky Nuts, have you seen the e-bike specific tyres from Schwalb? Um, what are they called? They've got a really funny name. Eddie Current. Eddie Current. Um, I saw those at Eurobike and those look absolutely insane with no kind of, uh, no admission to rolling, you know, fast rolling at all. They've basically thrown rolling resistance out the window and created what is a motorbike trials tire um, designed for e-bikes with a really heavy casing. So um, yeah, if you're looking for even more traction than the DHR2, those might be worth considering. I haven't tested them myself, but they do look insane. Um, speaking of traction, I'm going to take this guy out of the box here because, uh, yeah, they look good for e-bikes. They certainly do, yeah. Um, and even, like, aggressive trail bikes as well. 
Oh, Shed Life Guy, we've got a 2.8 DHR up front and an eddy current on the rear. Oh, there we go. What do you think of the eddy current tyre, Shed Life Guy? Uh, perhaps you can give us some feedback on, uh, I take it you're running the 27.5 by 2.8 plus eddy current, because they do the 29 front and the, excuse me, the 27.5 rear. Let's see what uh, Shed Life Guy has to say about that eddy current, because... Uh, yeah, they do look pretty good. Um, and as with a lot of these kind of, um, after seeing your review and comments, I'm waiting on 29 by 2.6 million DHF to come in. Have you got the specialized eliminator? This is Paul Davison who's asking, have you got the specialized eliminator there on the couch? Wonder how that compares. Oh, Shed Life Guy, sorry, I'll just jump in here. Sh grips like poop on a blanket. So he's talking about any current rear tire. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know. That's a great description. And uh, that helps everyone here who's wondering about that particular tyre, so thank you. Um, if you're just tuning in now and you're watching live, welcome to Fresh Goods Friday Live. Um, we're talking about tyres. If you've got any particular tyres that work really well for you, let us know. We're, we're all interested. We're all uh, getting some good tips here. Um, Paul, I don't have the eliminators here. And the reason is because the UK team currently have a whole bunch of eliminators on test. Now, uh, one of my good friends back in the Lake District is going to be testing some tyres for us, James Vincent. Um, he's tested a whole bunch of tyres for us. He basically does everything he possibly can to destroy them, and he does a very good job at that. Um, we have the Eliminator in 2.3 inch widths and 2.6 inch widths, and we also have the regular grid casing and the new black diamond casing. Now, the black diamond casing is the really heavy duty. Oh, Callum, you mean Fresh Goods Thursday Night? Yes, that's right, Callum. Thank you. Fresh Goods Friday Live or Fresh Goods Thursday Night Live, depending on the world, where in the world you're watching from. Um, so, yeah, we were just going back to the Eliminator tyres. Um, so we do have them on test, um, but I am leaving that to the UK team to test um, because they, uh, they need those kind of tyres at this time of year, whereas... Uh, where I am, I need some kind of drier, faster rolling tyres. So I wouldn't be putting the Eliminators to a very good test if I was to review them myself. Um, but I'm very interested to hear how James goes with the Black Diamond casing, which is a much heavier duty, not quite two-ply downhill casing, but close. You know, it's kind of in between a trail tyre and a downhill tyre. Perfectly um, suited for enduro racing. So we've got both the grid and the black diamond casing in the Specialized Eliminator tire. So stay tuned for the full review on that. Uh, we'll be testing both 2.3 and 2.6 inch widths in the Eliminator. They look fantastic, so I hope the performance lives up to, uh, to the hype. Um, I do have a bigger tire here um, relative to what we were just looking at. This is the Purgatory, the Specialized Purgatory tire. So it's, it's I would call it a technical trail, you know, borderlining on Enduro Light tire, perhaps. Um, so designed to perform in a variety of conditions, dry and, loo uh, dry and wet, um, loose and hard pack. Um, now the Purgatory, I've actually got in two different sizes here. This is a bit wider than the tyres we were looking at before. This is 2.6 inch width. So uh, this is the, the new school. Uh, at single track we call it British Plus. It's, it's a bit more modest. You know, it's not full plus, it's not American like brash plus. It's a bit more uh, refined. Uh, more conservative, 2.6 inch, but generally we find um, the bigger 2.8, 3, 3 inch plus tyres tend to be less, um, well most of the tread patterns in those in those tread widths, ten, um, tyre widths tend to be faster rolling, uh, lower tread height, you know, designed for, for dry conditions, um, with the exception of those DHRs, and there are more tyres coming out like that, that have a more generous tread height in the 2.8, 3 inch plus tyres, uh, which make them more, more useful in muddy kind of UK conditions. But in general, um, to get a tyre that kind of cuts through the mud a bit more um, and survives in those kind of conditions, this sort of 2.5, 2.6 inch uh, width tends to be uh, potentially a, a better option or a more versatile option, I should say. So this is the Purgatory. Oh, we just had a comment come through. Callum. Would that make a good rear? Uh, we're talking about the purgatory, right? So um, I would suggest that if you're running a butcher on the front um, or an eliminator on the front or even a hillbilly or something like that, if we're staying within the specialized tire family, yes, this would be a good rear tire. 
Um, it's got ramped center tread, so it's designed to provide reasonably fast rolling. It's quite a consistent center tread as well. Um, so that, that basically helps to reduce rolling resistance. Um, and, uh, but it still has decent cornering blocks on here. Um, so these are much beefier than the fast track and the ground control tires in terms of the cornering blocks. Um, but sort of not too far off what you'll find with the slaughter or the, or the butcher. So still designed to provide good cornering traction. So this is the 2.6 inch model. Um, Specialized says you can run this on rims from 25 up to 35 millimeters. Um, actually the, the range might be bigger than that, but what they do is on the, on the box for the tire, where did I throw that box? Here it is. On the side of the box here, uh, can I show you this? Yeah, up here. I don't know if you can read this. This might be uh, back to front for you. But they basically list the width of the tire depending on the width of the rim. So if you're mounting it to a 25 millimeter rim, they reckon this tire will measure 2.45 inches wide. If you're mounting it on a 35, uh, 30 millimeter rim, you're gonna blow the tire up to 2.5. And if you're running it on a 35 millimeter rim, you're gonna get this uh, to 2.55 inches wide. So just short of the 2.6 inch claimed width. Um, I take it you could probably run this on a 38, maybe even a 40 millimeter internal wide rim. Um, I don't know, I haven't tested it yet, but I will be trying that out with a variety of different rim widths and uh, we'll get some actual measurements for you um, as well as the actual weight of this tire. The claimed weight is 930 grams. So it's the heaviest tire we've got here out of this lot. Um, so still underneath that kilo barrier, um, meaning that it's, you know, it's still designed as a hard kind of trail tire, um, but perhaps, perhaps for enduro racing, you'd still want a heavier duty casing than this. Um, this might be more for kind of everyday trail riders and, uh, and those who are heading out into the mountains for, uh, for some alpine style riding. So this is the, uh, the Purgatory. We're just talking about this one here uh, with the grid uh, reinforced sidewalls. Um, but I do have one here. This is the 2.3. I won't bother getting this out of the box because uh, it's the same tread pattern as this one here, but we've got the 2.3 and the 2.6 inch. So I'm going to be running this on the front, this on the rear, and uh, we'll be trying them on a variety of different rims to see how they perform. Oh, we've got some more questions coming through from people who are watching live. John Wakefield, 2.8 inch Maxxis High Roller on the front, Recon Plus on the rear on my winter hardtail, works well on 35 millimeter rim width. Yeah, that 35 millimeter rim, that's, that's about spot on for that, for that tire width. So. Sounds like a really good uh, combination you've got there, John. Um, Matthew's saying, thinking of swapping the rims on the e-bike, 30 millimeter 2.6 or 35 millimeter 2.8. Is wider always better? That's a really, really good question. Um, so I think rim width is totally dependent on the kind of tire you're gonna be running. Um, and in some cases it depends if you're talking about the front or the rear as well. So. On the front, generally you want, you might want a slightly wider tire because you want a little bit more grip. Um, but at the same time, you want a tire with reasonable stiffness, you know, that it's not gonna wobble around on the rim. So a wider rim helps to bring the tire beads out. It helps to stabilize the sidewall so you get less of that kind of wobble rather than having a narrow rim which allows the tire to kind of wobble around, especially at lower pressures kind of when you're dumping it into a corner, that tire is more likely to roll and kind of give you, um, give you a bit of understeer and just kind of give the bike a bit of a vague feeling on the front. Um, on the rear, you might want a little bit more comfort. So a, a slightly narrow rim actually gives the tire a rounder shape and that allows for more damping and a little bit more ride comfort. So that's why there are some wheels on the market, uh, complete wheel systems that run a wider rim on the front and a narrow rim on the rear. Um, as for the e-bike, that's a really good question. I think because you've got that extra weight, then a wider rim might be more beneficial because you can stabilize that tire, um, particularly when you're really hammering into stuff. You know, if you've got a 20 kilo e-bike, 22 kilo e-bike plus rider, that's a lot of mass that's smacking into rocks and, and, and you know, steppy ledges on the trail. So potentially a wider rim might give you, you know, that stronger, more stable platform for the tire and without doubt a, a heavier duty casing. But then again, it depends on you know, your riding conditions. It depends on your riding style as well. Um, I know people who get away with tires like this on an e-bike, you know, fairly lightweight really in the, in the scheme of things. And then I know others that swear by downhill tires. They won't run anything but downhill tires. 
So it really depends on the terrain that you ride, how hard you are on tires as well. If you're puncturing all the time, you know, if you're, if you're bottoming out the tire and you're pinching the casing and you're getting holes and slashes and cuts, then you probably need a heavier duty tire. So that's also something to consider too. So, um, so yeah, there you go. That's, um, th those are a few specialized tires that I've got on test here. Um, but if you've got any recommendations for me to, che to, to check out, um, after we finish this live video, I will be checking out the comments so you can, you can drop any questions or, uh, or suggestions in there if there's any particular tires you want to see tested um, or any combinations or any particular widths or rim widths tested, um, let me know and I'll, I'll do my best to, to help you out there. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically all of our kind of goods that we've gone through here. Fresh Goods Thursday Night Live or Fresh Goods Friday Live. If you are watching from the UK, thank you for staying up so late. It's quite late in the evening now. So, and thank you so much for tuning in um, and not only watching, but also asking questions and uh, letting and just joining the conversation. We really appreciate it. It makes the job more interesting for me, that's for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm probably gonna head off now. I've got a few more videos to film today and the rain stopped and uh, I think I'm gonna go hit the trails because generally here, um, because the trails are so dry, rocky and quite sandy as well, after the rain, they are absolutely on point. Oh, uh, Shed Life Guy, Victoria Airliners really help a wider tire on an e-bike and I found a set of Stooge Motor X bars helped with stability and steering. Ah, the Stooge Motor X, those are the proper like old school BMX style risers, aren't they? Um, I think I saw those in Fresh Goods actually, what, a month ago or something like that. I think Hannah might have a set of those for, te for testing, excuse me. Um, and yes, the Victoria Airliner, that is another fantastic recommendation. Um, I actually just gave that an Editor's Choice Award for 2018. Um, out of my four awards, the Vittoria Airliner was one of those, and it's probably one of the best products I've used this year. Um, totally stoked on what it does in terms of allowing you to run lower pressures, um, but without the risk of pinch flat. So having that tubeless insert inside the tire uh, makes a big difference to kind of reducing tire wobble and, uh, and just basically eliminating pinch flats. I mean, I've, I've yet to to get a pinch flat testing that system. So yes, big shout out to the Victoria Tech Airliner. I can highly recommend that for sure. Um, so yeah, absolutely would agree with that one. Right, so I think I might leave it there. Um, as I said, I'm gonna go out and hit the trails. Uh, whereabouts are you riding this weekend? Have you got any riding plans in particular? Any, uh, any spots that you're gonna go hit up this weekend? Um, or are you gonna stay at home and uh, make uh, mince meat for your mince pies for Christmas and decorate the tree. Um, I haven't done any of that yet, but apparently Christmas is coming according to, uh, to everyone um, in town who is driving like a madman on the road. Um, yeah, a little bit of extra traffic here in Bendigo. People go a bit crazy this time of year, so <laughs> I'll be trying to avoid the shops at all, um, at all costs. Right, I'm going to head off. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. And, um, and if you've got any questions, um, even after we finish the recording, drop them in the comment section below right here. Um, if you like what we do, subscribe, and uh, we'll have plenty more videos for you coming in the future. And uh, yes, we shall see you next time. All right, guys. Bye. Try and end the video.